Welcome everyone! In this video I show you how I transform this FPV camera into a professional cinematic camera. I already introduced this camera module in one of my previous videos and I showed its capabilities. This Hawkeye Firefly Split V6 Pro camera is a 6K capable FPV camera with a particularly large 1 inch type sensor. This larger sensor makes it very interesting because it provides a superb image quality. The basic package that came with the camera had an interesting attachment, which is a plastic enclosure for the sensor with a C mount. Unfortunately, I destroyed the thread of this attachment, so I decided to design everything from scratch and somehow find a proper metal C mount which I can incorporate to my new design. Having this sensor with C mount lenses allows us to record amazing footage. Plus, with the help of an adapter, other lenses, for example M42 lenses can be used with the camera as well. The goal was to make a small, compact cinematic camera using this FPV camera kit. I wanted it to be small, portable and reproducible. Although the design requires 3D printed parts, the rest of the components are off-the-shelf components and they are relatively cheap. All the components can be found via the affiliate links I provided in the description of the video. I also shared all the parts and relevant stuff in the article I have on my website, so please check it. The first thing I wanted to do is to find a proper C-mount flange. I found a random web shop where I found a flange with the correct threading, but I managed to buy their one and only item and even if they had more in stock, people outside the EU might not be able to buy it. Plus it was rather expensive. So I went to AliExpress and I managed to find some nice metal enclosures for CCTV cameras with C-mount flange. The enclosure I found was especially interesting because the threaded ring was rotatable. So I could always ensure that the aperture and focusing distance on the lens are pointing upwards so I can see them. But this is just the first step. I had to figure out how to attach the sensor to this metal enclosure. First I got rid of the enclosure and I only kept the front part that has the C-mount flange. I modeled it in Fusion 360 to make it possible to model the rest of the enclosure later on. Then I designed a 3D printable seat for the sensor. Actually this seat does not only accommodate the sensor's PCB, but it also holds the infrared filter. This filter is very important to have. Without it, the image would look weird. The filter sits in the seat, but I also had to ensure that it stays where it should stay. I did not want to use glue because it might end up in places where it should not be. So I printed a small frame thingy that I wedged into the seat. It provides enough support for the lens and it does not block the path of the light coming from the lens. After assembling the seat with the metal front panel and the sensor, I could attach this assembly to the main housing of the camera. This is a single piece of 3D printed enclosure. First, the processor module must be fixed in the housing. To improve the cooling of the hot components, instead of using the heatsink that came with the camera, I attached the heatsinks directly onto the chips. So first, I removed the metal shell from the top side of the processor module, and then I glued the heatsinks on the parts that needed extra cooling. By removing the metal shell and directly attaching the heat sink to the chips, I already greatly improved the cooling of the module. But I did not stop here, I added active cooling to the camera in form of a 30mm radial fan. The fan will be attached to the rear cover of the module and it will be continuously operated from an external 5V power source. I will show this soon. Then the recently shown and assembled front panel can be attached to the enclosure's front side and it is attached to it by 4 screws. The four screws are screwed through the body of the enclosure and they are attached to the four ears on the metal front panel. These are roughly 10mm long M3 screws. The front panel nicely sinks into the 3D printed enclosure. It is not only the four screws, but also the snug fit that holds these two parts together. So attaching heavier lenses to the camera should not be an issue. The housing is designed in a way, so it is easy to access the USB-C and the HDMI connectors and the SD card slot. This is very important because all these ports are needed. The camera is powered through the USB-C port from a power bank and the external monitor is connected to the camera via the HDMI port. And obviously the video is recorded on the SD card. Although connecting an HDMI monitor is not mandatory because we can also use a phone with a Wi-Fi connection to the camera as an external monitor. I also created a little flap that is used to access the two buttons on the processor module. With the help of these button extensions, we can turn the camera on and off, turn the Wi-Fi on and off, and also start and stop recording. I actually managed to damage one of the buttons during the development of the camera housing, so it does not click as loudly as the other button, but of course it works. Proceeding further on the enclosure, there are two standard attachments on it. 
One is at the bottom, which is a breast insert nut with a 1 4 inch thread. This allows us to attach the camera to a tripod. Then, on the opposite side, there is a long cold shoe mount. Its main purpose is to allow us to attach an external monitor to the camera. As I mentioned, this can be a proper monitor or a phone. I actually went full on DIY and assembled an HDMI capable 3.5 inch external monitor. Well, it's not a rocket science because what I basically did is that I designed a 3D printable enclosure for an off-the-shelf 3.5 inch HDMI display module. The module's enclosure has a quarter inch breast insert nut in its bottom, which is attached to a cold shoe screw adapter. The monitor can be tilted, which allows us to optimize the monitor's view angle. The assembled monitor has a relatively compact footprint and its HDMI and USB ports are easily accessible. The only downside of this specific display is that its aspect ratio is not exactly the same as the aspect ratio of the camera, so the displayed image is slightly squeezed along the horizontal axis. But it is not too bad, the camera is still usable. At this point I want to show a smart stuff I've been searching for in a while, specifically for this camera. This USB cable plays an essential role in this project. Its input side is a regular USB-A connector. Then this branches out into three USB-C connectors. Two of these connectors are power-only connectors, they cannot transfer any data. However, the third one can. So what I did is that I used the power-only connectors to power the HDMI monitor and the cooling fan, and I used the power plus data cable for the processor module. So for example, if we want to use the camera module with a computer, and we still need the HDMI monitor for some reason, we can still use everything properly. The cable is also available in a shorter version, which is probably easier to use. As you might have noticed, I did not incorporate any batteries into the system. The reason is because different people might have different requirements when it comes to battery capacity and so on. Also powering the external devices, the HDMI monitor and the fan from a single lithium battery would be cumbersome. Therefore I came up with this power bank approach. The 3-in-1 cable allows us to power everything correctly and the user can pick whatever power bank they want. Plus nowadays basically everyone has a power bank at home so this also makes things easy. Furthermore, one can just plug the USB cable into an adapter and power it this way. Now we can proceed further to the rear panel of the module. This has three main roles. First, it closes the camera's enclosure. Then, the 30mm radial fan is also attached to it. The fan sucks the air out from the enclosure and blows it out through the holes on the side of it. I added a lot of holes to the enclosure, so hopefully the airflow is good enough to keep the processor cold and happy. As mentioned earlier, the fan is powered from one of the USB cables. So, there is an additional USB-C connector on the side of the enclosure and I soldered some JST connectors between the USB connector and the fan, so I can entirely disconnect the rear panel if it's needed. The fan is a bit noisy, so if you don't want to bother too much with extra circuitry to regulate the fan's speed, just buy the 12V version of it. Running the fan at less than half of its nominal voltage will make it silent enough while it is still moving enough air inside the enclosure. Finally, on the outer side of the panel, I attached my custom 5-way joystick for controlling the camera. I specifically designed this joystick to replace the camera's original button-based controller. It is not only easier and more intuitive to use it, but it is also significantly smaller. The wires of the joystick controller go through a small groove under the fan, so the fan can sit flush on the surface of the rear panel. Finally, the rear panel is attached to the enclosure with four bolts. The final enclosure is relatively compact, it is less than 60 mm along all its sides. If you squint your eyes hard enough, it looks like a professional camera, such as the Ari Alexa Mini, or not. With the display and the lens attached to the camera, it looks even more professional in my opinion. Also, the attachments put things into a better perspective. The lens is nearly as big as the camera body, and the HDMI monitor is not much slimmer either. However, this complete setup is still relatively small, and it packs a really high performance. I also have other lenses for this camera. For example, this TV zoom lens is significantly larger than the previous fixed focal length one. It is more than two times larger than the camera module, but it has a relatively large zoom range and a quite nice image quality. It is a fun lens. Unfortunately, it is not par focal, so when the zoom is changed, its focal point also shifts, but it is still fun to use. But actually, the optical zoom is not always necessary with this camera, especially in controlled environments such as my little workshop. 
The digital zoom of the camera is rather good, since the camera has enough pixels to spare. But of course, ultimately, the optical zoom has a better image quality. If you want to build a similar camera, please visit my website, I put the link in the description of the video. I wrote a detailed article about the assembly procedure and all the parts, plus I shared a bunch of affiliate links for the relevant products, so you can find them easily. Plus, if you become a channel member, you can also get access to the 3D printable files and print the parts yourself. In the future, I will use this camera mainly for two things. First, I will attach it to my metallurgical microscope, and I will use it to record nice videos of the chips and other gadgets I open up. Second, I will use it for recording my soldering and PCB assembling videos. I recently bought an amazing microscope lens specifically for this purpose. If you have any suggestions regarding the camera, or you are curious about something more, please let me know in the comment section. I hope that you like this video, I hope you learned something, and see you in the next video.